this is something I probably should have mentioned before. We've seen that um, hydrolyses are supposed to give you carboxylic acids, but actually, under basic conditions, hydrolyses give you carboxylates. However, in many cases, you don't want the carboxylate. In many cases, you want the carboxylic acid. So what do you do if you want to do a basic hydrolysis, but you still want to end up with the carboxylic acid? Well, after you do the basic hydrolysis, you then have to add acid to protonate it. So this is a pretty common pattern here. Um, if you're going to do a basic hydrolysis, but you want to end up with the protonated carboxylic acid, you just need one more step where you add the, the proton. This is actually fairly common. Um, it, although it seems like if you wanted this in the first place, why don't you just do um, a hydrolysis under acidic conditions? Uh, so I'm not really sure what the advantage of this is um, over here, um, but it, it, it does seem to be, uh, it comes up a lot in class. There must be, in some cases, for some reason, there must be some advantage to first doing the basic hydrolysis and then putting in the acid, rather than just doing the acidic hydrolysis. I don't know what the advantage is. But anyway, uh, this is something that you could see that comes up very frequently. If you do a basic hydrolysis, but you really wanted the protonated carboxylic acid, that's no problem. You just add acid in a separate step. I've drawn two separate arrows here to indicate that we're going to have two separate steps. Step one is when we add these reagents, and step two is when we add these reagents. So let's start by thinking what happened in this first step. Uh, so let's draw the mechanism. What's the mechanism for how this would react with these reagents? Um, it's going to kick off the chloride. Good. So let's show that. Is it going to add a carbon as well, though? Let's go through the mechanism and see. I think there was a, a little snafu with the hydrogens here. Yeah. Um, but we have two hydrogens on the carbon and no hydrogens on the chlorine over here. We have to actually have to draw in this bond to show how the chlorine can leave. What's the name of this mechanism? What reaction is happening here? It's um, a substitution. Yeah. What's the precise name for that type of substitution? What type of substitution? It's an uh, SN2. Yeah, it's an SN2. We have a primary substrate and a decent nucleophile. So going back to the previous term, a good nucleophile and a uh, primary substrate would definitely give us a normal SN2. And is that going to be a carbon, just so I can picture, is that a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen? Yeah, that's a good okay. point. That's right. We need to know that when we see CN, that's just that cyanide or nitrile group. Okay. So that's right. 
Uh, if you actually went back to general chemistry and drew in all the valence electrons, you could see that this has to have a triple bond to the nitrogen. But it's easier just to memorize that. Okay. That's good. Now it's very important here to get the right number of carbons. You correctly saw that since there's a carbon nucleophile, we need to have one more carbon here than we started with. If necessary, you could number the carbons to make that clearer. But I think it's clear enough. Um, maybe the thing that, well, all right, I think that's clear enough. Here's this original alpha carbon, and here's the new cyanide carbon. So we just did normal SN2. These are just the solvents. And as you were mentioning, this is what that really is. It's really just a CN triple bond. This is what's called a cyanide nucleophile. We've seen that cyanide is a good nucleophile for SN2. Okay. Uh, we haven't mentioned that in a long time, though, so maybe we need to remind ourselves cyanide is a good SN2 nucleophile. All right, that's the first step, just normal SN2. Um, this doesn't really matter, but you could say that the potassium would then counter the chloride leaving group, but that's not very important. Okay. Now we have to decide what would happen in this next step. Now this next step, we won't do the mechanism, we'll just draw the product. So what would happen when we take this reagent and treat it with this? Let's try what the product of that would be. It's going to take uh, one of the pi bonds and um, it's going to uh, protonate the carbon. What do you think the final product is going to be? talk our way through that. Um, what type of functional group is this? Uh, that's an amine. I'll take your time. That's not an amine. Oh yeah, it's a nitrogen. Yeah. That's right. Why is it not an amine? An amine is when the nitrogen has a normal single bond to the carbon. Uh, so this would be an amine. This is the nitrile. Correct. All right. Uh, we, and actually, uh, we, uh, we've just seen a couple reactions of nitriles. Now, what, what do you think was going to be the name for the reaction that happens here? What's the name it's for the reaction? Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Yeah. All right. And we won't go through the mechanism for that, but we've learned how to just say what the product will be from a nitrile hydrolysis. All right. Very important that to realize that this step doesn't add or drop carbons. It just turns the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. Now, under these conditions, should the final product be a carboxy carbon or a carboxylate? Uh, carboxy carbon. Yeah, it should be a, carbox it should be a carboxyl. And it is a, you did draw it as a carboxyl. Good. And by the way, do you remember, um, even though we're not going through the mechanism, what does happen to this nitrogen? What's it going to turn into? Um, it's going to turn into. Ammonia. Now, under these conditions, should we get ammonia or ammonium? Uh, uh, ammonia. Uh, ammonium, excuse me. Because we're under acidic conditions. So this actually would be the product, even though we haven't gone through the whole mechanism. Now, you, uh, I, for a second there, I think you forgot about the nitrile hydrolysis reaction, and you were just trying to figure this out step by step, and you were on the right track. You said, gee, it seems like this strong acid is going to want to protonate this nitrogen. And you're right. Uh, I believe that is the first step of the mechanism. The first step of the mechanism is protonating this nitrogen. Uh, and Would it um, just continue to protonate it? Basically, okay. it protonates the nitrogen, and then the water attacks. Okay. And then it protonates the nitrogen again, and then another water attacks. And then eventually, the nitrogen has to protonate two more times. So we keep having nucleophilic attacks and protonations alternating until finally we've broken all of these bonds and replaced them with NH bonds. Okay, so actually it's, it's a pretty cool mechanism, but we just won't have time to, to go through the details. Okay, but we're seeing the basic idea here. Okay. Let's 
Let's give a name to this compound. Now, this is an alkyl halide. Alkyl. Now, it turns out that halogen, halides are not named with suffixes. They're named with prefixes. So instead of calling this chloride, we should call it chloro. Oh, okay. yes. We name halogens just with prefixes. Halogens never get suffixes, even if they're the only functional group. That's just the convention. And the chlorine could have been theoretically on any of these carbons. Yes. So we have to say it's one chlorodecane. Right. That's just going back to an earlier term of uh, nomenclature. One chlorodecane. 